Here we are. It's the physics video lecture. Physics 105B video lecture 33. We have an all time great problem today. We're continuing on the Foucault pendulum. So I'll start to reproduce some of what we had there last time. We're looking at our rotating Earth and there's our omega and then down here on a down the longitude we have a coordinate system I'll go like this x y z that's a local coordinate system and you can see that there is an angle alpha between the vertical axis in our coordinate system and the omega rotational axis of the Earth. So what else do we have here? We have, that seems a little bit tilted. Let's try that again. Omega. Yeah, we have omega is 2 pi divided by a day, or so we're told. And we want to suspend a pendulum, a simple pendulum, here in this room, okay, and then observe its oscillations. So the equation of motion in our frame, which we see as being a moving frame, is m vector x second derivative equals f, the external force here, this is of course you know, gravity, um, and then there's that fictitious force minus 2m omega cross v, which we can call vector x dot. Okay. And we're interested in the motion, small oscillations of a pendulum, all oscillations of a pendulum of length L mass M. So in our in our frame here where we are, we would have our x, y, z axis, and we'd suspend the pendulum up here at point L, and it could swing freely. and its projection onto the plane is how we reduce this from three equations to two. So we, we took the cross product, wrote this all the three equations out, and we arrived at, I'm gonna write down and kinda of turn this into a homework problem as well. We arrived at, I'm skipping a step that was there last time, x second derivative equals omega naught squared x or minus plus two omega y dot y second derivative to the minus of course minus omega naught squared y minus two capital omega x dot and I'm going to write here omega squared omega naught squared is g over l and this capital omega is this omega times the cosine of alpha, because this is the z component, right? Projection of this omega onto this z axis right here. Yes. So I want to make this into a bit of a homework problem, because I did most of these steps but I didn't do all of them. If we're, if we're talking about a pendulum, actually we have some kind of plane polar coordinates going on at first. And what we want to do for the homework is make sure we justify the steps from this equation to this equation down here. So I'll call this one equation one, and this here equation two, and I can write down the homework. And we will 
will say homework show that um, pendulum so that for the pendulum L Small oscillations, okay, for the small oscillations of the pendulum one equations one lead to equations two. Okay. I think I'll even set that up, set that up a bit. Okay. Here along these lines. So suppose we are um, X, Y, Z. Okay. And we, if we show this just for one thing, it'll be enough. So there's the point L, and there is our pendulum. Okay. So let's just imagine it's swinging over the Y axis and ignore the X axis. Or better yet, let's just call this the X axis. No loss of generality here. Okay. We know for a pendulum, if this is an angle theta, that theta second derivative equals minus g over l theta, right? That's the small oscillations of you know, a physical pendulum or pendulum. And if you multiply both sides by m times l, or actually, first of all, let's say, but we know that x is equal to l sine theta right here. Okay. L sine theta, that's the x projection. So for small oscillations, we have x approximately l theta, x dot l theta dot, x second derivative, l theta second derivative, for small oscillations. Okay. So let's go ahead and take this equation here, equation star, we have, multiply both sides by ml, we have ml theta second derivative equals minus ml this g over L is omega naught squared. Theta equals, and then I could write, this is m x second derivative equals um, this will work, so minus m squared L theta and L theta is X. Okay. L theta is X according to this right here. And then you can see what we have here. Minus omega naught squared X harmonic oscillator. Okay. So the small oscillations approximation is where we go from here down to here. You could have, uh, oh yeah, and the right side of this equation, if you look at it, you, know, you could have started here with your free body diagram and then your projection, and then you're locating your angle data there again. So in terms of the homework assignment, we want to do something along these lines so that we fully justify going from this equation here to this equation, and we're still talking about the Foucault pendulum, because once we solve this all-time great problem, we're probably going to want to build one. Okay, so that is the homework problem, and I'll continue solving this now. I'll go ahead and and I erase this right here. Yeah. Good. So you have this. And 
let's go on and solve this set of equations now. Okay, this is our, these are our equations, linear constant coefficients coupled equations. So we've been here before and making sure I got the plus and minus sign right. Here's what we're going to do. So to solve the coupled equations, solve these equations, let C equal X plus I times Y. So we're going to go into the complex numbers again. C dot is X dot plus I Y dot. C double dot X second derivative plus I Y second derivative. And we just add these equations. We take the first equation plus I times the second equation. Um, so x second derivative plus i y second derivative. So we're adding those here, this column. We have c double dot. And then we have equals minus omega naught squared c. But how about these mixed ones? Let me go ahead and write the answer down, and then we'll have a look at it. We have minus i times 2 omega c dot. Okay, so first equation plus i times the second equation leads to this. And if we want to inspect this now, um, we will have. I times C dot is equal to I times X dot plus I Y dot equals I X dot minus Y dot. <clears throat> and that's where that sum comes from here. So you'd have I X dot minus Y dot. Yes. Okay. So that's, and we have another minus sign in there. So yeah, this equation is the first one plus I times the second one. And now we have one variable, complex variable, and we can solve this with really elementary techniques. So next, let C equal, let's see what letter I'm using today, A, B, C, C sub zero, E to the lambda T. So we'll take that as our trial solution and go into this differential equation here. Um, and let's just go ahead and put this in standard form. Plus I to omega C dot plus omega naught squared C equals zero. So there's our differential equation. There's our trial solution. And we have two derivatives, so we have lambda squared. We have plus i times two omega. One derivative brings down a lambda, and then no derivatives gives us plus omega naught squared equals zero. So there's our polynomial that we have to solve for. And we're going to get lambda equal one half. We've got the negative e, negative two pi omega plus minus the square root of 
d squared, so negative 4 omega squared minus 4 omega naught squared. And we're going to simplify this. So obviously, we you see we need nice cancellations of the twos there. Um, now we have to one, uh, say something about which of these is much larger than the other. But actually, the both positive we got a minus sign, so we're going to pull out an i here. So what we're going to end up with is lambda equals negative i capital omega plus minus i omega squared plus omega naught squared. Now we'll get a good and reasonable approximation here when we realize that this omega is 2 pi over 1 day in seconds, which is a lot of seconds, and this omega is 2 pi over a handful of seconds for a, you know, a finite short length, several meters, so to speak. So, so what we have is omega squared is much, much less than omega naught squared, because again, this is 2 pi over one day, and this is 2 pi over some number, you know, a few seconds. So one second, 10 seconds, doesn't matter. So this will simplify to lambda equals negative i omega plus minus i omega naught. And that's what we'll work with. We'll go back into this trial solution and uh, work our way towards the answer. Good. So let's see what we can keep and what we can. I think I'll keep that nice picture right there for future reference. Let's. Okay, so we're going to write down the general solution and then we're going to do some initial conditions. Okay, so the general solution we have C of T would be C sub plus and minus, right? C sub plus e to the lambda plus t plus c sub negative e to the lambda negative t. So c sub plus e to the minus i omega t. It's a common factor, so I can actually pull that out. So how about equals e to the minus i omega t, and then I'll have this C plus e to the i omega naught t plus c negative e to the minus i omega naught t. Good, so there's our general solution. And now we'll look at the initial conditions. Okay. So initial conditions. Let x of t equals 0 be equal to x0. So we're pulling the pendulum out to x0 and letting go. Okay. So x dot of t equals 0 is equal to 0. y of t equals 0 is equal to 0. And y dot of t equals 0 is equal to so those are our initial conditions. Just pull the pendulum out and release it from rest. So what do we have here? At t equals 0, we have x 
zero plus i y zero, that's the left side, is equal to c plus plus c negative. And c dot of t equals zero, which is x dot plus i y dot, both zero. So zero equals the time derivative of this at t equals zero. Now omega is much, much less than omega naught. <clears throat> so we can just say c plus minus c negative is equal to zero. Strictly speaking, we have a product rule to take here. Um, but we're going to have a multiplying one by o, capital omega, one by lowercase omega, so the second one dominates okay, at t equals zero. So that's what we're going to get. We could call that approximation, but we're good. Okay, so these two are equal. And so what we have here is C plus. So each of these constants is equal to x0 divided by 2. So c plus equals c negative equals x0 divided by 2. So that's the evaluation of the initial conditions. Um, c of 0 and c dot of 0. Okay, now we can go back into this, into this right here, and see what happens. Okay, so I'll go ahead and erase this for a moment. Two is the cosine of omega naught t. Cosine of omega naught t. And remember, this was x of t plus i y of t. And so we have a very nice result. x of t is equal to, best way to write this, x zero cos omega t with the minus or plus sign um, doesn't matter cos omega naught t y of t is equal to x zero around these in a moment. And then this is the cosine omega t, capital omega t. Now this, cos omega naught t, is going to be multiplied by the minus i sine um, omega t, or I can write sine of minus omega t. Either way, I'm going to pull out the minus sine capital 
So what we have here is fast moving term and a very slow moving term. Okay. So omega is much, much less, capital omega much, much less than omega naught. So without these two moving at all, or in fact, for very small times, we're just getting the standard oscillation, okay, standard harmonic oscillation in X and in Y. Okay. But this here, we're going to see, represents a rotation of the plane of oscillation. So I think we have enough room right here to bring that back into play. Okay, so maybe one more picture here. right underneath that one up there and then we'll showcase this result. So let's just do a top view of our XY plane. So the pendulum is swinging above this xy plane, okay, swinging back and forth above it. And these, this cosine omega t and minus sine omega t is doing something to say, um, yeah. Okay, suppose we're swinging this way, back and forth, top view, so the top view looking down, then this would be the plane of oscillation, x and y, just x zero, cos omega not t, that's how it's oscillating back and forth. This cos omega t minus sine omega t means that this plane of oscillation that we're looking down on is rotating clockwise. Plane of oscillation rotates clockwise. And yeah, with that picture up there, we should be able to uh, tease this apart here. So let's uh, make sure everything is clear. We have our x of t and y of t. Okay. So this x and y of t ignoring this cosine capital omega and sine omega t. This would just be the x and y component looking down on it, it's oscillating back and forth this way over the plane. Okay. Now because it's being multiplied by cos omega t sine omega t, at the, at the speed at which we can see this capital omega in operation, this plane of oscillation is essentially just a straight line because okay, it's going back and forth many, many times. Um, and because we have the minus sign here, you know, that x is going as cos, the y is going as minus sign. Therefore, it's rotating clockwise. So the plane of oscillation rotates clockwise. And anything else there? Yeah, here's another, another way to look at it. What was this omega again? So, rotates clockwise um, with angular frequency capital omega. Here, make sure. 
through the school board that's there. That's that capital omega right there. So what do we observe? If we put this pendulum, if, we, if we're standing on the North Pole and we hang this pendulum, then the Earth rotates underneath it and that fixed coordinate system indeed, you know, is rotating clockwise there. But um, not the coordinate system, but essentially North Pole is the easiest way to see it. The Earth is rotating under the pendulum, so the pendulum is just rotating in some particular plane and this coordinate system rotates around. Now as you go down towards the equator, this omega changes again. So remember omega was equal to this omega cos alpha. Don't mix these two up. This omega here was the angular frequency Oops. of the earth and this omega naught, of course, from our pendulum. Make cosine alpha. So down when alpha is 90 degrees, you get no rotation. Um, that's a plane of oscillation. And the question is, let's even add this to our homework. Just to wrap this up. So what would the period be? How long would it take for the plane of oscillation to rotate a full 360 degrees? Here, where we live. Question. What is the period T of the rotation of the plane of oscillation? in our latitude, right? It's latitude dependent. In our latitude. So at this point we have to build one of these things. Yeah, build one, suspend it from a high ceiling, question of how to drive it is actually a, 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 an interesting one as well. There's a phenomenon called parametric resonance where if you, if you drive a pendulum with a vertical motion, very slight vertical motion at the right frequency, you'll be able to overcome any losses due to friction without affecting the plane of rotation. So that's one method to do it. Okay, I think we're going to leave it at that. We've got this excellent result here. Um, makes sense, right? The limiting case of the North Pole is the one we can be sure of. And uh, the other one we would actually have to try out. Okay. Good, I think we'll leave it at that. See you guys next time.